This is a podcast by Wellhouse Church, where we talk about what it's like to be a Christian Monday through Saturday, to live as a person of faith in a culture against faith. So let's talk about anxiety. Shorty got anxiety. <laughs> I always say it. Anytime somebody says anxiety, I always, I don't know why. I don't even know where that comes from, actually. I don't either. <laughs> I just know that it's popular in culture, and so I say it. I don't know. Yeah. So, I didn't do this last week, and I should have. Yeah. Um, oh, well, f- before we get there, how was your day? It's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, it was, um, I mean, technically, full disclosure, we're recording this the day after we recorded last week's Let's Talk. Yeah. So, I mean, not much change. I still got, I still have bad days. But once again, today was a better day than... Than... Than previous days. Previous days. That's always a good thing. And I actually had a really good day today. Good. Um, I got up kind of in a funk because I had to go to work again. And <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just a yep. thing that happens. It happens. But um, I spent a lot of the day praying. Yeah. And I started the day by reading... Um, a theology book that you gave me. We were just talking about it. Yep, yep. Um, Shout out Roger Olson. Yeah. Um, Flipping Gold. His his stuff on narrative theology and the journey of modern theology is just yep. fantastic. Yep, Dr. Olson's um, legit. It, uh, it started my day off right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but then I started actually working. And I finished a big project that I've been working on for like a month, month and a half, something like that. At your day job? At my day job. I finished it. It was like this huge weight off my shoulders. Yeah. But in the midst of all that, I'm praying and right. and, and, and just like my normal day, mm-hmm. right? And we're going to have to talk about this off camera. I don't really want to talk about it on camera. Got it. Um, but uh, I feel like the Lord gave me a revelation. Hmm. And uh, kind of made me, kind of made me like feel better about some things that have been keeping me down. Good. I definitely want to hear about that. Yeah. Anyways, um, it relieved a lot of anxiety that I've been having. I'm not gonna say it again. I wanted. Shorty got anxiety. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it again. <laughs> so I didn't do this last week, and I should have. Um, I just want to do, I just want to give like a little bit of a a clarification here. We, everything that we're going to be talking about today Mm -hmm. and yesterday and going forward, unless otherwise specified, is coming from the National Council for Behavioral Health. Okay. Um, they have like all your statistics and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And, and most of the content is just kind of adapted from my mental health first aid. Got you. Right. Got it. Um, you need text to go back to yeah, in, sure. in everything. For sure. Um, and that's this is just the text that I've chosen. Right. Because it just, it's a great overview mm-hmm. um, uh, of all the different topics. And so, um, unless otherwise specified, it is coming from the National Council of Behavioral Health. And I have to say that because I don't want them to sue us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not that they would. Straight up. You're just like, dude, you're just like repurposing content. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, we are repurposing, but we're also, this is a faith and culture podcast, right? And so yeah. we're taking this and comparing it to faith. Yeah. Right. Um, and so in a way, the we worst are, they can do to us is a cease and desist. And we take last episode down and redo yeah. it. Like, it's not a big deal. Yeah. But. This is coming from the NCBH. So, moving on. This is really important. Mm-hmm. And I have, to, I have to say this up front. Everyone has anxiety. Yes. Every person on the face of the planet who Absolutely. has ever existed... Absolutely. ...has experienced anxiety in some way, shape, or form. Yes. Ex- ah. who? Correction. If you are able to feel emotion, uh, fair point. You yeah, have experienced point. anxiety. Every single person who's emotionally healthy enough to feel things has, had has anxiety. experienced anxiety. Hear that again, listener. Every single person. Yes. 
<clears throat> there are extreme cases in which you cannot feel emotion. Yep. Um, an, an extreme um, psychosis. Sometimes. Well, there there are extremes of anything, right? Sure. There's a book over here on my shelf somewhere. Oh, up here, Leadership Pain by Samuel Chand. He has a story in there of a young girl. She's like three years old. Her mom is in the kitchen. She's in a playpen. Um, like with just her own toys, the mom walks out of the kitchen and the three-year-old girl has no joke bitten her finger completely off. Ooh. You know why? Because she couldn't feel pain. She's one of less than half a percent of people in the world that do not feel pain. Those people exist in every category. Sure. Extremes exist in every category. Absolutely. And in and, and those extreme cases, maybe they don't experience anxiety, right? Right. Um, majority of people in the world, majority. the largest majority. The largest majority. I, I would say 99.5% probably. I, I don't know what the actual stat is, and I don't want to throw that out there, but like, yeah. it is a huge amount of people. Yeah. It's several, several billion people. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's um, seven on the point, planet. Right. There's seven point seven billion people on the planet. I would. It is a safe bet to say that seven billion. Yeah, right? for that sure. That's a safe bet. So, not to not to mention all the people that have previously lived exactly, on this planet. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So everyone experiences anxiety in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. So essentially, what anxiety is is is, is it's an increased alertness. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it comes with fear. Um, sometimes it comes with like higher heart rates. Um, okay. So like borderline panic attacks kind of thing. No, no, not necessarily. Um, because having anxiety and your heart rate increasing doesn't necessarily mean that you're having a panic attack. Can it go there? It can go there. Okay. Sure. We're going to get there. Okay. We're going to get Got there. Got it. Okay. Um, but essentially it's just adrenaline. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, but it's just a negative effect of adrenaline, like it's the adverse of. Well, it doesn't have to be a negative effect, and we're I'm I'm going there right now. Okay. Anxiety can be a good thing, in certain ways, if handled appropriately. I presume. Well, wait. I'm getting okay. there. I'm getting there. All right. Anxiety, while unpleasant and does not feel good, it can be beneficial to you. Hmm. In what way? Helps you complete tasks. It helps get you out of dangerous situations or keep you from going into dangerous situations. So that one I get. As an Enneagram 3, I don't have a problem completing tasks. But, right, right, right. <laughs> but, but other people might have that problem, yeah. So, like, for me, as an Enneagram 6. Yeah. I live it in fear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a good I idea. live, I live in, fear. in fear. Yeah. I have anxiety coming out my butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I will wake up in the middle of the night sometimes and remember, oh my gosh, I have a paper that's due tomorrow night. Yeah. Right? And so um, first thing I do when my feet hit the floor the next morning, I start writing. Yeah. And because I'm driven by anxiety and driven by fear, I meet that deadline. You get it done. Yeah. Right. Sometimes it can be a good thing. Okay. Fair. I'll give you that. Yes. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have yesterday. Yeah, yeah. But like hearing you talk about it, like, yeah, I, I, I can give you that. Yeah. Sometimes it can be beneficial. It does not feel good. It is not comfortable. Yeah. But it can be a good but thing. But isn't that true about all things? There are lots of things that don't feel good that are beneficial. Sure, absolutely. For instance, it's really difficult to be a Christian and specifically a Christian in America and read Mark eight and realize that like suffering is just mm. a part of being a Christian. No, it yeah. doesn't feel good, but like it's, it's a part, part of, it's of part being of conformed life. into the image of Christ. Yeah, for sure. There are lots um, of things that are beneficial to us that don't actually feel good. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. And that can even go even further like shots, right? Um, yeah. I, if you've ever seen, He's uh, a baby about needles. What, what's the what's the Jim Carrey movie we used to watch when we were kids oh, all the time? Uh, <clears throat> it was the the Bruce Almighty. Yeah, Bruce Almighty. Ugh. I'd be positive. 
I'd That's my po- blood type. I'd be positive. I'd be positive you ain't touch me with no needles, okay? <laughs> I do not like needles. I'm like, nope, uh-uh, not happening. Yeah. So, now, anxiety, the intensity and duration of anxiety is dependent on the situation and okay. the person. Okay. Um, it can last... 60 seconds okay to several years wow. just living in a state of anxiety just constant anxiety yeah wow and, and that can come in a, a myriad of different ways okay in those cases where it lasts a really long time yeah you might have an anxiety disorder yeah right most people when they feel anxiety it, it's the shorter term okay you know, it, it's a few minutes here. Maybe it's a day or two. Maybe it's a week. Yeah. Right. Because you've got this like pressing deadline or right. you've got a, a situation that's causing you a lot of stress. Finals and, week if you're in college. Uh, finals week. Your marriage is in shambles. What, whatever it is. Yeah. Right. You can have these states of anxiety um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have an anxiety disorder. Right. Not that medication can't help those times, because sure, yeah. if you're still having anxiety in this increased rate, even yeah. though you may not have a disorder, yeah, your brain chemistry is still messed up, right? Yeah. And what medicine does is help reorchestrate your brain chemistry. Yeah. So, intensity and duration can be dependent, mm. and that's something that I think a lot of people miss. Okay, I think a lot of people think that like. If you're anxious, if you're an anxious person, mm-hmm. it has to be a constant thing. Mm. That's just not true. Yeah. It's just not. Anxiety sucks. Yeah. Whether you have it for 60 seconds or 60 years, straight anxiety up. sucks. Yeah, straight up. Now, the difference between an anxiety disorder and having anxiety, just general everyday anxiety, is the severity of it. Okay. Um, again, of which is dependent on right. the person and the situation. Right. It is persistent, meaning it, it, do, it, it does stick around. It continues to come, yeah. Um, and it in, interferes with your daily life. So if it, it like it inhibits you from proper functioning or something? If it inhibits you from proper functioning, if it, if it affects your your job... Okay. Your academics. So when you say job, like your productivity or your just product- in any capacity? In any capacity, okay. right? Like if you're at work and you like start getting really anxious and like you're like, oh my God, I, I, I've got all this to do and I've got all this to do. And then you like start task switching. Yeah. And you can't get anything done. Mm. You might have, that That might be a sign of an anxiety disorder, right? Okay. Like, um and it can cause physical and emotional pain. Yeah. Right? Like we talk, uh, like we've been talking about the last two episodes and we will continue to talk about mental health problems and mental health challenges can not only affect your emotional state, but your physical health, but your as physical well. health as well. Yeah. Nausea. Right. Um, yeah. So that, that's what happens to me is like when I have severe anxiety, I get nauseous. I do too. Um, I also get a headache sometimes. Yeah, I don't get that. I don't get headaches a lot, though. Mm. There are some people that are prone to headaches. Like, our mom is super prone to headaches. And that's what I was about to say. When she is in a super anxious state, she gets headaches. Yeah. And she feels them, like, right here. Yeah, headaches are not something that I've really ever dealt with. I don't really get those. Mm. For me, it's stomach stuff. It's always nausea. Generally, it is for me, too. Yeah. Sometimes I will get, like, a a stress headache. Yeah, okay. Um, now, something about this, too, and we talked about this a little bit um, last week, but anxiety can be uh, a risk factor for depression. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I did, I was going to ask you, and maybe we need to do a whole other episode about how, how anxiety and depression feed one another. We could do that. But, because you hear people talk about in mental health, the most common one, they say anxiety and depression. Yeah. Almost like they're... Synonymous. 
Almost. Well, not synonymous, but they're joined together. Yeah. But they're very different things that I do understand feed one another, but that that relationship seems to be much more convoluted than we want to give it credit. So we could do a whole other episode on this, but I think I'm going to do this justice by saying this. Okay. You have depression mm-hmm. over here. It yep. is its own thing. It stands alone, and it can be on its own. Okay. And then you have anxiety. Okay. Its own thing stands on its own. Okay. But there is a, a level of intersectionality that not only happens between depression and anxiety. This is probably the most common intersection okay. of all mental health challenges and disorders, right? But all of them, everything that we're going to talk about can intersect. Hmm. Okay. In some way, shape, or form. Anxiety and addiction, depression and addiction, whatever. Uh, bipolar disorder and anxiety, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which, that, that's almost kind of a prereq. Like, anxiety is almost a piece of bipolar disorder. We're going to talk about that because of manic states and those sorts of things, okay. right? got it. Um, but all of these things do intersect at some point for some people. Yeah. Right. It just looks different on the person in their situation. Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I don't think it needs a whole episode based on just understanding that if you are depressed, you can also be anxious. And okay. if you're anxious, you can also be depressed. Okay. So they're not mutually exclusive, but they're not always tied together. Not always, but they can be. Okay. Got they it. are risk factors for one another. Okay, got it. Right. Yeah. It's just a good way to think about it. Yeah. Now... Some stats show and some research has shown that 18%, this is a pre-COVID stat, that 18% of adults between 18 and 54 have an anxiety disorder. A true disorder. A true anxiety disorder. 18%. So almost one in five. 18%. Wow. Never would have guessed that. Never would have guessed that it'd be that high. Because then, you know, what did you say? One in five? For depression? Well, no, for mental health challenges. They oh. experience mental health challenges. Got you. Um, yeah. So are these people, these people are included in that one mm-hmm. in five? Mm-hmm. That can't be right because that's all of them. There's only 2% left for all the other challenges. So it is one in five for people who experience some level of, this is, that's all people. This is just U.S. Okay. One in five of all people. Okay. Uh, experience mental health challenges. This is just U.S. Okay. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Kind of. Okay. Kind of. I, I feel like these should be transferable, but I know they're not. But Yeah, they're not. Yeah. Okay. And something that is interesting here, and I should have given you a little bit of a warning. I, I was going to, and I'm it's sorry. It's fine. Whatever. We don't do that on these podcasts. We like, uh, this is yeah. conversations. Typically, these things start young. So yeah, anxiety that, disorders that typically start. That doesn't shock me at all. Yeah. That's not the warning. Oh, I was going to tell a story. Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm open, especially if you're talking about me as a kid. Yeah, I don't care. Not about you. It's about me. Oh, okay. Well, but I you don't. are involved here. I don't care. In some way, I don't care. Remember when I told the story of my first panic attack? Uh, yeah. You remember what was going on there? We don't have to tell the story, but you remember what was going on during that period of time? The, yeah. Yeah, over the period of time, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That is what influenced my panic attack. Okay. At like eight, Seven. nine years old, something yeah. like that, right? I was I don't remember how old I was. It was something like that. Yeah. You would have been in you would have been a freshman. Uh, uh yeah. Yeah. So that would have put me Six, seven years old. Yeah, I was like fifteen, so you would have been nine. Yeah. I would have been like eight or nine, something like somewhere in there, right? Yeah. <clears throat> that was my first experience with anxiety and extreme anxiety. Okay. And it, there is also some non peer reviewed research to show that um, Enneagram sixes have a troubled childhood in some way. Okay. And have experienced some level of fear and anxiety as a kid. Um, and it just influenced them. I think that that is what turned me into the six that I am today. Hmm. That's interesting. All, all Enneagram numbers have quote unquote, a troubled childhood. Sure. Because sure. there's it's something, there's something influential that happened yeah, yeah. 
that made you that mapped your love map yeah, yeah, in yeah. a certain way that like how you needed to respond in order to receive love. Right. And so, yeah, yours happened to be that season. You that think. season of my life. And I came to that conclusion this morning. Hmm. Uh, or I say this morning, earlier today. I okay. came to that conclusion. And I was like, ooh. That's whenever I first started experiencing anxiety. And anxiety has never left me since. Yeah. That has to be the catalyst. Right? Yeah. Like, At least the starting point. Yeah. 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 For sure. Or the starting point, not the catalyst. But th yeah. that's the starting point. Um. So, we have different types of anxiety disorders, um, and this is not going to be an exhaustive list. I'm only going to talk about two of them because they're the two most common. Um, we have generalized anxiety disorder, GAD or GAD, you may have heard it. Um, it's just an overwhelming, unfound worry, right? It's just thing that happens. Um, and then you have an actual panic disorder, quarter of people with anxiety disorders have a, a panic disorder. A quarter of people with anxiety disorders have a panic disorder. Hmm. So, wow. So 25%. Yeah, 25% of 18%. So, I uh, mean, like, still six a, per, like four and a half percent. Still a large majority. Yeah, right? like of U.S. people. I mean, 330 million, four and a half percent. That's a lot. That's a ton of people. And, and we talked about panic attacks already a little bit, and we mm -hmm. talked about it in the first episode some. Um, panic attacks do not mean panic disorder. Right. As we've stated. Um, oh, oh, I forgot about this. And it's more likely to happen over the age of 20. Yeah, it doesn't shock me, because before that, you you're dependent upon everybody else. Yeah. yeah, you enter the world, and... Um, you start realizing this crap crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> people be crazy. This crap be crazy. And essentially, what it is is panic attacks. Very, very dumbed and watered down. It's just short periods of extreme, extreme anxiety. Yeah, it's like somebody hit you with a flipping snowball of anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Right in the middle of summer, and it just melts off. Yeah. Right. Um, so let's go with some some signs and symptoms just really quickly. I'm just going to read off a few. Um, just because, again, you guys need to know um, the signs and symptoms to watch them in yourself and others. Um, mind racing or going blank. Um, decreased concentration, decreased memory indecisiveness, con confusion, very vivid dreams. Hmm. That one I find very interesting. Hmm. Um, unrealistic or excessive fear and worry about past and future events, irritability, impatience, um, avoidance of situations, distress in social situations, sleep disturbance, restlessness or tension with inability to relax, um, shortness of breath, Sweating, dizziness, numbness, uh, GI problems, right? We've talked about that. Yep. yep. Um, and some, some of the risk factors here. Um, and, and these, I think, uh, are important. Um, if you are more sensitive to people, places, and events, or that you are more sensitive to people, places, and events ar of around you, uh, traumatic experiences affect your emotional and physical um, sense of safety and security more deeply. Mm. Tend to see the world as threatening. Mm. Um, have a history of anxiety in childhood. Are female. Females, statistically, have a higher rate of anxiety. Mm. Um Misuse of alcohol, um, and we, we've kind of talked about all this. So, yeah, um, that's anxiety. Now, I would like to switch and, like, let's look at this from a biblical stance and look at a, a biblical character, very prominent one. Yeah, really quickly. Um, 
I don't think Jesus has a diagnosis of like an anxiety disorder, but there's at least one place in scripture where we see Jesus have a massive amount of anxiety. And we also see it affect his physical health. Yeah. That's in the garden of Gethsemane. And in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is praying, and this is where he famously says, Father, if there's another way, take this cup from me. Mm. He knows what's coming to him. He knows what he's about to endure. He's got a ton of anxiety around it. And this is where we get the text that he sweat blood. Biologically, if that were to happen to you, you would die. You would die theologically, the reason Jesus doesn't die is because he's without sin. Mm -hmm. But biologically, the capillaries that connect your veins to one another have popped from the inside out, and you are literally oozing all of your blood out of your skin pores. Yeah, You die within minutes if that happens. Jesus' anxiety is so severe in this moment that his body is literally turning against him. Yeah. Your anxiety, you're not alone. Every single person, including Jesus, has experienced anxiety. And you are not alone And Jesus understands the comfort you need in dealing with that anxiety. Don't be afraid to turn to the Lord in moments of anxiety and say, God, if there's another way, take this cup from me.